So here I got the day chart, five minute candles for DPW, DPW holdings. Here's the three day to get a better feel. So it spiked from like the 205 to 210 range all the way to 530 this pre-market on Monday. Sold all the way off to the 200 SMA around 310 and then broke it. Broke the three and then hovered pretty much around between 290 and three in after hours, right? So uh, let's go over the catalyst first of all. One of their holding companies announced that they're introducing a new electrical vehicle charger product line, right? So they announced how big that industry is going to be. And it's interesting, they do say it provides three types of connector standards for fast DC chargers, including CAD Demo, which is Honda, Nissan, Toyota, and others, as well as CCS, which is BMW, Ford, GM, Jaguar, Volkswagen, and others, and Tesla. So it's interesting, especially with the uh, A-Y-R-O-S-O-L-O -O -O and all the other EV tickers being so hot, including Tesla, which started it all. So, I mean, luckily they did a 10 kill lately. So we can see on June 30th, they only had 6.1 million shares, right? So it's low fo float. That's my big take on this tank heel. The revenues pretty much stayed the same as last year. It's also worth noting, I mean, look at this. They only have $626,000, so it's not good. And they're losing, and if you look at their net loss over these three months, it's $6.5 million. So this play, you're always worried about dilution, and we're going to go over that later. Well, actually, let's go over it right now. This is definitely just a short term momentum play and nothing more than that so I had you invested a thousand shares at the start today you'd have 1.25 shares think about that so if you invested 10 grand at the beginning now you'd have 22 dollars they did a reverse split in March 15 2009 for 120 one for 20 and they also just did one on August 6 last year so last year they did a one for 40. So that's what uh, is keeping this company alive, just dilution and offerings. So they got a good catalyst. They got a lot of volume. Let's look at the year to really get a bigger picture of what's going on here. So for the year, it's worth noting, look at the volume today. It's the second most it's ever had this year, 77 million had 120 million on this spike and 54 million on this spike but also we're noting on all these these four or five huge volume spikes it's never a multi-day running right so that's what the shorts that's why this morning I told you guys oh, at 530 the best short of the year because every short is going to just attack the hell out of this but this is one's kind of it's interesting with that lower float and that type of movement. Will there be a little bounce tomorrow before it ultimately fails? That's my big question. So let's go on the hundred day and go over some uh, points, some price targets I'm looking for. So the first one that's going to be the question mark is three dollars. Is three dollars going to become a support or is it going to become resistance? That's the big question for me. If it becomes a support, the first price target I'll be looking for would be 325. Right around here. The next one will be 340. And we'll go over these on another time frame where it shows better. This shows better my uh, support levels. So the three, if the three doesn't hold, 275. That'd be the next one I'll be looking for. If it bleeds under that 290, which was a low today. 275 doesn't hold. 250. Right there. I'll be looking for a bounce off the 250. 250 doesn't hold. The next bounce I'll be looking for will be off this 235 level. If that can't hold, 
I'd be looking for a bounce off the 220 right here. And if that ultimately fails, I'll be looking for the bounce off the two. And if that breaks down, it's going to be ultimate panic. I don't even know. Maybe like 180 around this 200 SMA. And then I'd wait underneath that for 150. But I'm thinking the two is going to hold at least for the for tomorrow as it was already at that level before this news so I'm thinking the 250 the 235 will be the the bounces tomorrow after the morning dip but I'm thinking in pre-market we might see a little push when shorts aren't fighting it and letting for new positions they'll let it go then dump it out to the bell to close later on but I'm thinking the 275 so if three doesn't hold, 275 for a bounce, 250, 235, 220. And then look, let's look at the uh, day chart for my price targets. So three is going to be that point, that real question mark. If three holds, the first one I'll be looking for, it will be right here at 325. You can see it was the uh, support on these levels that holds right here 340 this next support level that would be my that broke so it would be resistance so that would be my next price target 325 then 340 and these are real tight because it's going to be very heavy but there's a lot of price action I, I personally watched today at 350 so I would 340 I know it's only 3% but at 350 I would be making sure to put my stop loss at if it breaks over or sell it around there at 349, 348. If, if it can't hit it, break it. If it does, 365. The resistant resistance here. That'll be the next one. That breaks. I think 390 is a possibility. The support level. Same situation. A close one at four here. It'll be heavy again. And it'll be heavy around 420. And I don't think it's gonna go much higher than that. If it does, the next one would be uh, 450, and then it would be 475, and then the five. But realistically, tomorrow I'm looking for the, the see if that three, if it holds three pre-market, I'll be looking for a 325 exit. And if that can break, I'll look for the 340, then 350, then 365, then 390. And four and four twenty. Those are all points that are going to be heavy from today's price action. And we got to think today we had um. What was it again? Seventy-seven million shares traded in a six-point-one million float. So you got to think this thing got rotated over twelve times. I mean, or around twelve times. Pretty crazy. So it'll be interesting to see what how this week plays out.